Hi, everybody. My name is Julian, and I'm a dev advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. In this session, we're super lucky to have Francesco, who's going to share lots of data insight with us. Uh, Francesco, welcome. Tell us a little bit about you. Hello, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, well, I'm Francesco. I'm a senior, I'm a senior machine learning engineer at Faction, um, a Belgian startup in the AI domain. Um, I'm a chemist. Uh, so I converted into data science after a couple of years in the aerospace industry. Uh, I joined Amazon, uh, worked in the Kindle business, uh, so that was books, and then I moved to ride hailing. And then after that, it was a little bit of fintech. Uh, and then, you know, right now, Belgium again with, uh, with Faction. So um, here and there, uh, but a lot of fun with uh, machine learning and data science so far. All right, yeah, and uh, Francesco has a really, really cool uh, data science blog, so make sure you go and, uh, and check that out. So the reason why I absolutely wanted to have you on this, uh, on this uh, session today is because, uh, like you said, you know, you've covered uh, quite a lot of ground uh, with data science, working in different, uh, in different companies on different use cases, and this is great because we're in the data scientist track, so we can go and uh, try to get a sense of uh, the state of data science today, you know, what works, what, uh, what is still a huge challenge and, and what we can do about it. So actually uh, tell us a little bit about the state of data science today uh, compared to you know, when you started a, a few years ago. How, how is it looking? Uh, how, how much progress have we made and uh, what, what is still very difficult? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's, it's it's a very good question. Like to me, um, like to understand like the the, the state of, of of data science now, uh, we kind of have to uh, review a little bit how, how the um, a machine learning pipeline looks like, right? Sure. Uh, and so you have at the, at the very beginning a business problem uh, because you you got to start from a business problem, right? You don't just wake mm -hmm. up one day and decide that you're gonna <laughs> apply machine learning <laughs> to a specific nope. to a specific like uh, what, whatever you want to solve. Um, so, uh, so you got your, 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 your business problem. And then, uh, hopefully at some point you got your, your data, right? So you, mm -hmm. you decide what you have to optimize for, you got your data, uh, and that is the second, the second part. So you got your exploratory data analysis, then you move to the, to the modeling side. And so feature engineering and modeling. Uh, and after that, there is of course, like the production part, right? The, the big monster. Yeah. So the production part and the monitoring. <laughs> so, uh, so to me, uh, to answer that question. So where we are right now in terms of data science. I think that uh, the 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 very I mean, the, the probably the only point across this, this entire the entire this entire workflow which works really really well is the the modeling part. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the tiny bit in 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 between, right? Which consists in training models, and that's because we have tons of uh, um, frameworks out there, right? In yeah. terms of like uh, even like st um, statistical uh, learning. So we're mm -hmm. talking about like XGBoost, LightGPM, CatBoost, you name it, Scikit-Learn, which is pretty much the founding pillar of all machine learning right now. Yeah. Uh, in terms of deep learning, you got like TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, it's, it's just huge. So it uh, right now we have like this luxury of, of can of, of being able to to choose the the mm. framework we want and be able to training models in literally three lines of code and we don't know that because like there is a lot lot of research which is which is happening right in those in those three lines of code so we are very lucky to be here right uh, in this kind of yeah, um, and we have we have model scenario. zoos and we have uh, absolutely uh, models on github and you know state of the art stuff gets published and you get the code and you can fine tune it and uh, yeah, so there's definitely no shortage of uh, very no fancy, shortage. very complex models. Absolutely. And then we have cloud infrastructure to train everything. So yeah, I, I would agree this this bit is, I'm not saying it's simple and fully solved, but yeah, it's surely the one that has moved uh, the fastest. It has moved, uh, it has, absolutely. It has moved the fastest and and, uh, and now we really have like the, I mean, I, I wouldn't say again, as, as you said, we don't have like the, the complete tool set to mm -hmm. attack and address any any problem out there, but it's yeah. literally the thing, the bit which is working best. For the rest, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I think we have to make a lot of a lot of progress. We made a lot of progress since I started, uh, but there is a lot, a lot to do. Uh, and, and, you know, we can start from the beginning, right? Which is yeah, the, let's, the let's business. Let's list them. Yeah, let's go from A to Z. 
so to speak. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So as I said, like the the, the business, right? Uh, and so uh, here, what I mean by that, I mean like the literally the communication with business stakeholders. Uh, this is uh, something. This is something which is often overlooked, right? Because data scientists and machine learning scientists, they they you know they want to talk about um, geeky stuff, right? All the all the training and 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 everything everything about like coding, right? Yeah. But then like a project does not exist if you cannot communicate it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so this is this is really important, right? Uh, and and to me that is that is not really working very well. We have to make a lot of a lot of progress there. Uh, but again, so we'll, we 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 might you know get back get back to it uh, uh, to that to that uh, uh, later on. Now just to list them, uh, yeah. the second is is data, as I said. Uh, so in terms okay. of data, I mean mostly versioning. Uh, that is to me like the, the the big problem we have in in terms of in terms of data. Okay. So um, there is, of course, like data gathering and then uh, data exploration and then data which is which is uh, not clean. That is very you know kind of infamous like problems like in mm -hmm. in, in machine learning. Uh, but uh, mostly linked to, to to production, I think that versioning is something which is uh, which is kind of missing right now, right? Uh, okay. So you're training a model on a data set, and then you know three months down the line, good luck in knowing which data set you've used to train your models. Yeah, and which features you've engineered then how exactly. you engineer them. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So <laughs> that is that is like a problem number two, right? Okay. Uh, then uh, skipping, well actually, you know, getting back to the to the to the training part, uh, I think feature engineer, uh, feature hmm. engineering is is uh, is something we have to make progress uh, also like in. Okay. Um, it's it's not it's definitely not not easy. Uh, and the, the 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 big problem with feature engineering right now is that it's super domain specific. Yes. Um, right. That is that is the huge problem. So deep mm -hmm. learning is what is trying to solve, right? So with deep learning, you don't. The whole part of deep learning is that you don't need feature engineers, right? Uh, you just you just like throw your image, your piece of text, your your tabular data to a gigantic neural network and will do everything mm -hmm. for for you, right? Uh, but in most cases, uh, this is like a big unspoken truth, like of machine learning. Uh, uh, deep learning is not used, right? Uh, so we have to be honest, right? Uh, yeah. uh, the the uh, yeah, statistical. It's a very small minority. It's a very it is. It is. It is a very small, small, small minority. And then, uh, you know, three ensembles and, and linear models are super powerful and they work yeah. really well. And for those, you really have to make sure you got your feature engineers right, right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so it's really hard to know because you move from domain to the from one domain to to from one one domain to another, and and, and you know everything changes, right. Uh, so that needs to be addressed. And then the production, of course. Right? Of you course. know, we could talk for uh, another couple of hours just. <laughs> Automation. <laughs> automation, automation and production yeah. and monitoring, uh, which comes oh, with yeah. everything, right? My production and, 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 uh, and automation, I would say. Okay, so shall we look at each one of those problems in detail? And uh, uh, last time we met, uh, you had really, really interesting insights on working with business stakeholders. Yeah. And, uh, and it's not a really technical topic, but it is a critical topic because if you don't uh, you know, if you don't have alignment with uh, with the business stakeholders, then you know what are you even building? You know, it's not clear. So, before we dive into the more technical uh, challenges that data science still faces, let's talk a little bit about working with non-technical teams and business stakeholders to frame the project. Absolutely. So uh, that is that is something I. I... I probably think it's it's the hardest thing, uh, which I still have to do now, uh, yeah. and that's something which you don't learn uh, anywhere. Right? There's not like yeah. a book like on how to address the uh, non-technical stakeholders, right? Uh, you just have to learn it yourself, and in most cases, you learn it the hard way uh, because mm -hmm. you know you you um, something is gonna fail and it's gonna be on you, right? Uh, yeah. And so the the problem here is that. Um, uh, well, first, like there is no, uh, you have to, you have to assume that that people in front of you uh, don't have the same understanding as as you do, and that is um, probably like a universal kind of uh, rule. Uh, but we often forget about this in, in machine learning and data science. Mm -hmm. So it's really okay. important to set expectations, right, in a in a in a project. So being able to explain exactly what machine learning can do, and most importantly, what machine learning cannot do. All right. Yes. Uh, Second and most important thing, you really have to understand the business problem. And by that, I mean the following. So if someone approaches you and asks you that, uh, uh, you know, there is this problem and you want to solve it with, with machine learning, um, that is possible. Like it often, it often happens that way. Uh, now, the first thing you have to understand is what is their current solution? 
right? It's very unlikely that people will just knock at your door asking for a machine learning solution without an existing solution, right? right. So they have something, like they have something which is running somewhere. It's probably a rule-based approach, mm -hmm. but it's running and it's working, right? So yeah. what, stay, what business stakeholders want from you is to improve uh, what is the current situation, right? So in order to improve something, you have to deeply understand it. Otherwise, you're not gonna go anywhere. Uh, yeah. So the first rule is really talk to your business stakeholders and understand their entire pipeline. By entire pipeline, I mean really uh, what is uh, uh, what are the inputs to the rule-based approach we are currently using? What are the outputs? What they want you to do? Hmm. What is the output like they're, they're looking from you? Like, is this like a probability? Is this a number? Is this a table? Uh, you shouldn't assume that, that people like want um, like um, probabilities just because it comes out of a sigmoid. Right. Uh, it's 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 really important to understand uh, how what people are expecting from you, and most importantly, how how they're going to use it. Right. So what sure. is what is that output that they're looking the for, customer? and how we're going to use the it? Customer. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Like customer first. Right. And so really working backwards, like from 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 the final problem uh, into like the the current solution. Uh, my biggest failures in in uh, in my career uh, have come from assumptions which I've made uh, and I've not checked. Uh, because I thought that people wanted me to do something. Uh, and that's just, n that's not, definitely not how it works. Uh, so you really should make sure that, uh, that um, you know, everybody is, is, is aligned on, on uh, expectations and also on progress. This is also yeah. something which I learned the hard way. Uh, make sure to provide uh, feedback um, Every week, uh, that's you know the the the, the maximum I, I would say. Uh, literally every week, send out emails, uh, uh, gather people around the table, explain to them what you're doing. The biggest problem with machine learning, um, from non-technical from non-technical standpoint, is that people think uh, that it's just a project like 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 another, right? So yeah. you have requirements, and then you execute, and then you get an output. And it's not like that, right? The problem with machine learning is that it's in most cases it's almost a research project, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You don't you don't know if it's gonna work. You don't know if you're gonna get your signal from your data. You just don't know it. So you have to communicate this uncertainty. Uh, because otherwise, after n months working on something and without <laughs> delivering anything, you're going to look very stupid. Uh, so make sure to communicate uh, on a, in a timely manner uh, which kind of insights you're getting um, and uh, and uh, you know which kind of progress you're making. Uh, yeah, and it's is... not it's not magical either. I mean, no. I, I agree, it's a little bit different from your usual project, but it's not magical. So you know, no. setting expectations, saying, well. This could very well fail. This is what I'm trying out. This is what worked. This is what didn't work. Uh, you know, involve them in a the project. Yeah, I think is uh, is critical. It is, okay, and that's... also, and also, like yeah, you know, just ahead. and also, like it, it, it's really important because uh, you can test your knowledge, right? Yeah. So in most cases, like in in for example, like the the the, the classical example is exploratory data analysis. In exploratory data analysis, it's very likely that you're going to uncover knowledge which people just didn't know it existed. Right, it's the whole purpose of data science, right? To uncover knowledge which was yeah. there and nobody, nobody knew about. Uh, and whenever you you figure something out, just make sure to communicate it, right? And 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 make sure that it's actionable. Uh, and just test what what you have found with, with people who have just more domain knowledge than than you have. Okay, let's move on to the next challenge which uh, you you listed, and that's obviously. Um, understanding data, labeling data, et cetera, right? Which is the, the start of every project. So what, what insights, what best practices can you share on data? Yes, yes, that, um, that's a good one again. Uh, so uh, I think like the, the, the single biggest advice I have in terms of data management uh, is uh, to uh, literally look at your data. Uh, sure. So what I what I mean by that is is absolutely uh, and actually opening up uh, a table and start staring at your rows and columns. <laughs> it, might, it might look awkward uh, and seem awkward, but it's not. You have to make sure that you understand um, the interactions between columns. Like does mm -hmm. uh, um, um, a paycheck column match with the income when match with the debts? Uh, if you're looking for you know an application credit scoring model, mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand uh, like the kind of nuances right which are which are there in your in your data uh, is can income be zero can income be negative uh, right it shouldn't be right mm. but then uh, have you actually checked so you spend a, um, a reasonable amount of time looking at your data uh, that's for sure 
Um, and uh, then, you know, in terms of challenges, uh, well, uh, we 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 mentioned a few already, uh, yeah. and we can go we can go over them again. I agree with you in terms of data labeling. That's uh, that's a big thing, right? Um, so, especially um, now, for instance, that I'm working with uh, images a lot, uh, I realize how hard it is to get good labels. Um, mm, in sure. most cases, we get we get images from our clients. Uh, and those are unlabeled, right? So we have to literally label them, uh, label them ourselves. Uh, so that's something. It's, it's kind of a first life for me, uh, in a sense. I always, I, I, I come like from a most more mostly tabular background, mm-hmm, and okay. it's those kind of background or type of work, uh, you pretty much come up, can come up with a rule-based approach to create a label. Uh, sure. But you have, when you perform object detection on images, uh, I'm afraid you have to uh, actually go and, <laughs> and draw your bounding boxes yourself. Uh, yeah. So that's that's a, a real big pain. Uh, and uh, um, I don't I don't think there's kind of a you know, magic recipe there. Um, I think yes, it's, it's actually good in the sense that it, it obliges you to look at your data, yes. like literally. Uh, so now I'm spending a, a fair a fair amount of time looking at every single image I have on it. Uh, uh, but yeah, so that's 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 indeed like a, a big challenge. Uh, and then I mentioned versioning uh, of data yeah. sets uh, at the beginning, um, which is linked to, to production or to monitoring or to logging, right? Uh, which is kind of like another big domain of, of, of machine learning. But that's also something which I find um, uh, missing like in the, in the toolkit of a machine learning engineer or data scientist. So we we have like these gigantic notebooks, right? And in which like, yeah. in which we train models, and then we import a CSV, uh, or we import a directory, uh, and then you know we have the model getting it out, uh, and then nobody really pays attention to that folder or to that CSV anymore. And then three months down the line, you have to find that CSV again, right? Because something got got wrong, mm-hmm. uh, and you have to debug and understand uh, which kind of data you fed into the model, and you cannot find it anymore. Or what about updating your data, right? Because your new data is coming in every single day. Uh, uh, so what should you do? We should automatically append rows to the, to the CSV. Uh, you know, those are kind of open questions, which uh, which I think that the machine learning community needs to address, uh, and we're not we're not quite there yet. Yeah, those are really good points, and um, you know, I don't want to get into AWS services too much during this uh, discussion, uh, but I, I guess if you're if you have labeling p- pains. Um, you can take a look at SageMaker, uh, Ground Truth, which uh, lets you Indeed. annotate uh, all types of data, including uh, images. And if you have large, <laughs> you know, mountains of images to uh, to annotate, you can uh, you can actually scale the labeling jobs using Amazon Mechanical Turk or a third-party workforces. So that's Absolutely. one option. Go, go and take a look at that one if you're interested. And uh, and yeah, traceability and model and lineage is uh, is another important one. And uh, and uh, SageMaker pipelines is actually some uh, some features that uh, make it easier to trace. Uh, you know, to go back from uh, you know model on an endpoint to train model to uh, the data set that was actually used and absolutely accelerate that yeah so go again go and take a look at, at those services if you uh, i wanted to mention i actually wanted to mention <laughs> if you allow me to i want really to, sure. to mention pipelines because uh yeah, sure. i think that's you know to me together with clarify uh it's probably like one of the greatest additions right of the latest reinvent uh and like for pipelines specifically like the the the, the pain point which which addresses and now we're moving to the to the production part uh, <laughs> yeah. uh is there yeah, let's, let's yeah. keep that yeah let's keep let's keep the production discussion for the end okay 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 <laughs> we'll get there. okay we'll get there. okay um okay yeah you mentioned clarify a stage yeah. clarify which is the uh, uh the bias detection and, and explainability feature uh can we Take a few minutes to, to talk about this. I mean, a lot of people have this problem now. Um, so, have you faced it? Uh, again, any any ideas on uh, you know what to look for on you know bias and explainability? Absolutely, uh, I did. I did face it. Uh, so, I, I I worked in the in the you know financial industry, uh, and I was actually oh, working okay. in sure. application credit scoring, uh, and that's kind of. A, the golden standard, right, or kind of the, the the classic example of where to uh, find and detect and fix bias. Um, so uh, that was uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, when I worked on it, uh, clarify didn't exist yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, it would probably be like have been a lifesaver at that time. Uh, but it's it's a it's a very hot topic and uh, and a 
big one, right? Uh, when we start talking about bias and ethics, uh, uh, you know, it it, uh, it gets it gets pretty serious. Like conversation gets pretty serious. Yeah. Uh, there are like domains in which uh, I think, like you know, data science just needs to be aware of it, uh, obviously. But there are domains, like the financial domain, in which uh, you know uh, you have to be compliant, like to the law. Yeah. Right? It's and regulation law, and it's, it's regulation. It's law sometimes. It's, it's yes. law. So there's exactly. no. It's not an option. <laughs> no, it's not an option. Right. You have to. You really have to make sure that that uh, you know you. Uh, uh, you're, you're doing things right. Uh, and like the big problem with, uh, with bias is that uh, in most cases it goes undetected. Um, and the, the second problem is that um, when it doesn't go uh, undetected, uh, it's really hard to fix, right? Uh, because yeah. like if you, if you find, if you have a, a feature, right? Uh, and that feature is, you know, the classic example is, is gender. Let's put it this way. Right? Sure. You, add, you add gender like to, to, you, to your model. And for whatever reason, gender uh, works really, really, really well. Right uh, now, uh, you know, like you probably ask yourself, why? Why this is the case, right? Um, yeah. Should it be? Uh, it probably shouldn't, right? Uh, so, yeah. is there something, some sort of like signal in the data which is being hidden by gender, and actually, it's 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 getting incorporated in another feature? Uh, so like the, 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 the classic solution, because you don't want to get into in, in trouble, like with regulation is to drop that feature altogether. Yeah. Right. Uh, I say, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't want trouble. Uh, so you know what, I'm going to drop that, that, that feature altogether, but that's definitely not a great solution, right? Because that feature, if treated well, uh, it could add a lot of, a lot of value, like, and it could mm -hmm. add a lot of value in terms of modeling. Uh, so those services like Clarify who, uh, enable like you to uh, add uh, to address like bias at the data stage, at the modeling stage, at the at the post processing stage. Um, those are those are really important, right? Uh, because like first, like in terms of like detection, just to make sure that that your data sets or your problem is as unbiased as possible. Like unbiased mm -hmm. problems do not exist, right? Uh, so you 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 will you're gonna have something. Uh, it's just a matter of understanding if it is acceptable or not yeah i think uh, it's, it's exactly that i think it's uh, uh sage maker clarify is is just saying hmm something needs to be looked at it's not saying it's right or wrong you know yeah. it, it's it's up to you to decide it's just telling you there's a discrepancy here there's a class imbalance there's a difference in uh positive labels with respect to the different uh groups of instances that you have and and that, and it stops there, and then you yeah. have to go and figure out what that problem is. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. This, this, this is a really interesting one. All right, yes. uh, we being conscious of time, let's move on to feature engineering. <laughs> yes, and then yes. we'll close with production. <laughs> Absolutely. So, feature, feature engineering, the big dark secret in data science. Tell us everything. <laughs> it, it it is like you know. Uh, I think like the the uh, single most important. Um, favor you can do yourself in terms in terms of feature engineering is to uh go and check out kaggle competitions okay uh it's a little bit awkward to say uh but i think it's a little uh, it's a little treasure or uh, like it's a it's a gold mine of of uh, feature engineering uh, techniques yeah. and methods ids and yeah tips yes and, yeah. Because again, that's together with the, this one, like feature engineering, together with the how to address business stakeholders. Uh, the, those are kind of the, the kind of things which, do, which you, you just don't find anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a book about feature engineering. Like what yeah. what what is it gonna say? Like just sum two features or like the ratio of two features? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is completely domain dependent, completely domain dependent. Okay. So there is there is nothing else that you can do about it. So I think it's it's uh, it's really hard. It's an open problem uh, in terms of uh, in terms of um, data science. That's what AutoML is trying to solve, yeah. actually, right? Uh, it's doing a pretty pretty good job at it. Uh, but again, nothing beats. Uh, sitting around a table with uh, the the uh, business stakeholder and sure. talking to him about like the the, the domain knowledge, right? Uh, yeah. What 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 does he know? What can we incorporate in this model uh, sure. that I didn't know about? Uh, and then building crafting features on top of that knowledge. Uh, so that is literally you know the piece of advice I have in terms of uh, in terms of feature engineering. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know I think uh, O2ML is still very young and yeah, yeah it, it works on. I would say simple tabular data and, and some unstructured data. But if you're looking at complex use cases, you know, life sciences and chemistry, right? You know yeah. all about it. <laughs> uh, it's not, I mean, it, the features are not something you find in a, in a SQL table or no. an Excel sheet, right? It's much more complicated than that. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
so yeah, again, um, we, we launched a few things uh, to help and uh, it's the first iteration of the service. So give, give that one a, a shot. It's called SageMaker Data Wrangler and it helps you visually transform your, uh, your features and build a transformation pipeline that you can export to uh, Python code and, uh, and uh, SageMaker pipelines, et cetera, and, and a yeah. few more. So that, there's also glue data brew, right? Uh, which I and yes, tested there's, a, and, there's uh, also uh, a, a similar capability in yeah. uh, glue or, uh, or ETL service, which is probably a little more uh, high level. You know, it's not, yeah. uh, you don't get to see the actual transformation code, yep. but uh, it's also very nice. It's uh, I think a little simpler. And if you're a business analyst and you don't need the, the code, this, uh, this is certainly a very good. Absolutely. Fit. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Okay. So, the last bit I want to discuss, and it's not a bit, it's, it's a monster, as you said, uh, is ops. You know, it's all fine and nice. You're in the data science sandbox. Everything works the way you expect it. And then you have to climb this mountain to get your model in production. And the real problems start there. So tell us about it. Uh, how do you deal Absol with it? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as, as I said, like uh, production is is a uh, is a uh, is a real monster. Right? So we could be you know talking about it for the next couple of hours, and there are all sorts of problems, or let's put it this way, challenges. Like you know, from monitoring to making sure that that your that your model is right, and how to upload and and deploy new models like in in in, in production. Those are open more or less open challenges in the machine learning world. Uh, to me, still like the the you know the single biggest challenge we have right now is how to streamline the training. To production uh, pipeline we have uh, and this is pretty much like ci cd right so continuous integration yes. continuous development um which is what by the way um sage maker pipelines is trying to, to address right so i was really excited when uh, the, the service was was announced a couple of months ago at, at, yeah, at rain <laughs> um we have to we really have to make sure that whenever you push your code, like you have your open PR and then your merge to master, uh, that event triggers uh, a series of checks, right? A series of, of subsequent events, right? Unit tests and then integration tests and then uh, load tests uh, and then tests on performance. And then the model finds a uh, gate after, one gate after the other, like right? one environment after the other until it gets to production. This is something which in most cases we don't have, like in the machine. Yeah, and it's software well. engineering, right? I mean, what you're describing is software engineering best practice. It is. It is software engineering. So we have to remember uh, that we are software engineers. Like first, we are software engineers. We code, we get code uh, to do stuff. Uh, and I really love like this quote, which I, which I found like in a Google paper uh, and I was, I was, which I was reading a couple of days ago, uh, which, tell, which reads, um, uh, uh, do machine learning as the great software developer you are, not as the great uh, machine learning scientist you are not, right? Uh, yeah, which really no, sums it up like to me. Uh, yeah. We are coders, uh, yeah. we have to get code right. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's great. And again, yeah, SageMaker Pipelines is, I think, uh, trying to help data scientists be uh, autonomous and, and efficient with tool that's, tools that they know, Python SDKs, Jupyter, et cetera. But then, yeah, you need a quality gate and you need to uh, you know, pass that model to uh, maybe an ops team or a QA team who will check that uh, you know, due process yep. has been uh, has been enforced, and uh, and then they get to deploy the model using tools that they know, like uh, AWS Cloud Formation and uh, and Code Pipeline and Code Deploy. So it's trying to be the best of both worlds, and I think yeah, yeah it's a really really exciting service. It is okay. So uh, we're almost out of time. So my final question, and uh, please give me a short answer, is. Uh, What's the, the best advice you could give to a, a junior data scientist or a young data scientist entering the field? What, what should they really, really focus on in their yeah. first few projects? Absolutely. Okay, so I really try to make it short. This is this is a really <laughs> tough question because I, I could talk again for the next couple of hours. Uh, but you know, let's let's list a couple of bullet points. Number one, as I said, uh, you have to be a good software engineer, right? So don't get don't get lost like in in machine learning algorithms, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. This is super fascinating, uh, but. Uh, make sure that you are a good software engineer. And to uh, the best way to do that is to integrate an open source project, like to me. Start contributing to open source. Um, uh, so that's that's something which I, I, I started doing uh, literally you know, four months ago, uh, and it is changing my life. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect to have so much benefits from it. Uh, you get peer reviews. Uh, you, you, just, you just become a better coder, a better software developer. Uh, so this is number one. Number two, start a blog of your own. 
uh, that is super important. Uh, it is crazy important. Uh, whatever test you perform uh, on, on whatever new algorithm framework, write about it, document it, write a blog post about, about it. Uh, and the benefits are immense. Uh, you, will, you will become a, a better communicator. As we said at the very beginning of the, uh, of the session, um, at, at, at some point in your work, in your work life, uh, you will have to communicate uh, what you're yeah. doing in an email, sure. in a meeting, in a presentation. Uh, so the better you are at it, the better it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be for you uh, in, your, in your work life. Um, and it's also like super fantastic, like for for um, uh, for job hunting, right? <laughs> You're just gonna yeah, yeah. show sure. showcase your knowledge. It's 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 uh, it's it's uh, just fantastic. Um, and then third one, pick a, a project and stick to it. Uh, that is really important. Uh, data science is overwhelming. Uh, you can get into computer vision, natural language processing, time series forecasting, and then statistical uh, uh, modeling. It's, it's, it's insane, right? Uh, it's just overwhelming. So pick a topic and stick to it. Dive into it. Peel the onion. Uh, make sure you understand it and write about it and test about it. Uh, so that is, uh, to me, you know, the, the, um, at, at, at least a couple of advice which I would, <laughs> which I would give right. to, to junior data scientists uh, to, get, to get started. All right, great stuff. Like you said, we could go on for hours or yeah. days, I suppose. You know, French and Italian can, can do this for a full week. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, if we have good food and a good wine, we can go <laughs> unlimited, but we have to stop. So, my friend, I have to thank you once again for this invaluable uh, exchange and the great advice you've shared with, uh, with all the viewers. I hope you loved this because I, I did. And uh, so, I'll see you soon, I hope. I, I loved life. it. And, I loved it. Uh, everybody out there, hope you enjoyed this and enjoy the rest of the conference as well. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.